It has been noticed many fish that leave the water to move to land. Will the new round of evolution, about to start again? By compiling a list of all living fish reported to be active on land, 130 species from 33 families, and examining their evolutionary relationships, the researchers discovered that in most cases, this behavior evolved independently in the different families. Venturing out of the water was always believed to be a rare occurrence for fish because it is fraught with challenges, landlubbers are faced with the fundamental tasks of devising new ways to breathe, move, and reproduce on land. But one of the biggest stumbling blocks that these fish encounter on their terrestrial stomping grounds is the risk of drying out. Moving from sea to land is no small endeavor, and it can't be done in one giant leap. For blennies, it's no different. These fish are still at home in the water, spending plenty of time foraging around in pools during low tide. But when the tide rises, these adorable little swimmers wiggle onto coastal rocks to stay high and dry. They have gills, so still need water to breathe, but they're able to get all the oxygen they need from ocean spray, splashes, and small moist crevices. Another great example, of evolution, is bichir fish. Polypterus, which are native to Africa's Nile Basin, are the closest living counterparts of those ancient stem tetrapods. They have true lungs as well as gills, so they can survive on land as well as in their preferred underwater habitat. For these reasons, Emily Standen at the University of Ottawa in Canada and her colleagues decided to try rearing them on land to see whether this made them more adept at walking than bichir fish that were raised exclusively in water. Bichir fish, which resemble eels, normally, walk by alternately planting each of their two front fins firmly on the sand. In each step they use one fin as an anchor for wiggling the rear parts of their body forward, ready for the next step with the other fin, see video. This walking technique improved in 100 bichir fishes that Standen and her colleagues reared in a tank filled with just a couple of millimeters of water. They doused the fish constantly with mist to stop them drying out and dying. These fish, and another 50 in a standard water-filled aquarium, were reared for eight months, after which Standen's team tested the walking capabilities of both groups. The researchers filmed the fish for finer analysis of their walking, and examined bones and muscles to see whether there were anatomical differences between the two groups. The main outcome was that if polypterus were raised on land, behaviorally they walked more effectively, says Standen. The land-raised fish raised their heads 1.5 times higher on average during walking to reinforce forward momentum, reduced the slippage of their anchor fins by a third and planted their fins 3.5 times closer to the midlines of their bodies, providing superior leverage for the rear part of the body. Their bodies also changed in a way that made them more like stem tetrapods. Their shoulder blades grew slightly longer than normal and were in better contact with a neighboring bone called the clethrum. Both of these changes were seen in stem tetrapods as they moved onto land. There were also changes in bone structures that gave the land living bichir something resembling the beginnings of a neck. In stem tetrapods, the neck ultimately separated the head from the body and is seen in today's terrestrial animals. Another examples. Lungfish, dipnoi, six species, have limb-like fins, and can breathe air. Some are obligate air breathers, meaning they will drown if not given access to breathe air. Some species will bury. Woolly sculpin, clinicotus analis, found in tide pools along the Pacific coast, these sculpins will leave water if the oxygen levels get low and can breathe air. Mudskippers, Ozudersinae, this subfamily of gobies is probably the most land adapted of fish. Mudskippers are found in mangrove swamps in Africa and the Indo-Pacific, they frequently come onto land and can survive in air for up to three and a half days. Mudskippers breathe through their skin and through the lining of the mouth, the mucosa, and throat the pharynx. This requires the mudskipper to be wet, limiting mudskippers to humid habitats. This mode of breathing, similar to that employed by amphibians, is known as cutaneous breathing. They propel themselves over land on their sturdy forefins. Some of them are also able to climb trees and skip atop the surface of the water. Mangrove killifish, mangrove rivulus, it can survive for about two months on land, where it breaths through its skin. Eels, some eels, such as the European eel and the American eel, can live for an extended time out of water and can also crawl on land if the soil is moist. The moray echidna catenata sometimes leaves the water to forage.
Swamp eels, which are not real eels, can absorb oxygen through their highly vascularized mouth and pharynx, and in some cases, e.g., Monopterus rongsa through their skin. Snakehead fish, Chanidae, this family of fish are obligate air breathers, breathing air using their suprabranchial organ, which is a primitive labyrinth organ. The northern snakehead of Southeast Asia can walk on land by wriggling and using its pectoral fins, which allows it to move between the slow-moving and often stagnant and temporary bodies of water in which it lives. Air-breathing catfish, Clariidae, amphibious species of this family may venture onto land in wet weather, such as the eel catfish, Channelobzapis, which lives in swamps in Africa, and is known to hunt beetles on land. Labyrinth fish, Anabantoidae. This suborder of fish also use a labyrinth organ to breathe air. Some species from this group can move on land. Amphibious fish from this family are the climbing perches, African and Southeast Asian fish that are capable of moving from pool to pool over land by using their pectoral fins, caudal peduncle and gill covers as a means of locomotion. It is said that climbing gourami move at night in groups.